Hi, this is Tarun and I am here with Corona and Calculus. Now what is this Corona and Calculus? Well, there are two objectives. Objective number one, you lose your fear of Corona, you lose your fear of Mathematics. Don't. Okay? By the end of this video. Objective, I am not saying go out of home and all. I mean stay home, stay safe but don't freak out. Right? And objective uh, number two is you will be able to make better sense of the data, the mathematics. I mean, uh, during demonetization, everybody became an economist. But uh, during Corona, though, it's a problem because one has become economist, one has become public uh, public policy analyst, one has become mathematician, one has become epidemiologist. Everybody has become an expert in their own right on different things. And there's so much of information coming our way, and we don't know how to make sense of it. So hopefully, this video will help. Now, before moving into calculus, no complicated stuff. Let's look at it in a very simple way. As I promised, you'll lose your fear of math at the end of this uh, video. So, let's start a discussion with this uh, story which we all heard as uh, kids. That hare and tortoise story. Hare and tortoise going to a running race and you're trying to check who's going to win the race and so on. And I think uh, recently there was a video on YouTube as well where they actually show you a tortoise winning the race and they actually show you a hare which is going there and which sleeps uh, in one place just like the story uh, which we heard as kids. So now, at the end of this uh, story, if I ask you a question, ki who is faster? Is the hare faster or is the tortoise faster? Well, one argument is that the hare is faster because we sort of understand, right? The hare is like Usain Bolt and tortoise uh, is you know, a lot slower. And another argument is tortoise is faster because tortoise won the race. So, if you use your... Uh, formula which we use, uh, which we learned, you know, distance by time. Wait, let's question ourselves, now what is the distance by time? I mean, we should first question ourselves, ki what is speed and why would I want to define speed? See, I mean, in, when you look at science, the way science works is not that, you know, God comes to a dream and says, better note kar lena, speed ka formula to na, distance by time hai, note kar lo, use kar lo, aur pura aapko pata chal jayega ki how this world works. No, right? I mean, it's not that somebody has come and somebody has given it to us, we found it out. So let's see, if this world did not have mathematicians, if this world did not have scientists, if we were the ones who were supposed to invent this mathematics, how would we do it? Now, if I give you two people and two people are running and if I ask you who's faster, how do you do that? Maybe one way of doing it is give them equal amount of time and see who's running more. Or in other ways, give both of them the equal distance and see who's running with less time, correct? If, if one person finishes in one hour and the other person finishes in 40 minutes, you would say that the guy who took 40 minutes is faster. That is your common sense. See, mathematics starts with common sense. The only thing is, it makes the common sense a little neater. Because the problem with common sense is, you know, common sense is very biased. You know, the common sense always suits us, right, in most of the cases. So, mathematics tries to make sure that those biases are, you know, put away. But it starts with common sense. So, yeah, so we say that, okay, I'm going to give everybody equal amount of time and let me see how much distance they can cover. So if my scooter is telling me, hey, you're going at 60 km per hour, I mean, now, nowadays it doesn't tell me because I don't use it. I'm sure you're not using it either. But generally, in those good old days when we were using our vehicles, when they would say 60 km per hour, what do they mean? Does it mean that you traveled 60 kilometers? I mean, if I travel 60 kilometers, I'll be out of Hyderabad. But what does it mean? For one hour, if you did not change your speed, what is speed? That intuitive understanding, right? That one thing, this is fast and this is slow. So this is, a, this, is an, this is kind of an intuition of this is one speed and this is a, a different speed. Now that intuition or that common sense which I have within me, can I make that common sense a little more rigorous is the question. So when I say 60 km per hour, what does it mean? If you go in the same way for one hour, you will reach, you will travel 60 km. If I say 30 km per hour, what does it mean? At the same speed, if you travel for one hour, you will reach, uh, you will travel 30 km. Right. But what is the problem? You might say it's kind of cheating. What do you mean by same speed? You're defining speed and you're using same speed in that. So the common sense is taking a beating here. So then we ask you why, if I have one hour, what are the chances of me changing the speed? Okay, nowadays I think there is no need to change speed because there is no traffic, nobody is outside except police, nobody is traveling, uh, police ambulance at all. But in normal times, you know, you go to a traffic signal, you probably have to wait at the traffic signal and there you are losing speed and there are places where the roads are very good, you go at a good speed. 
So you can give me a hundred reasons over why speed might be high sometime and why speed might be low sometime. So you know there's a chance of changing speed. Like your hair and thought my story also, I can go, I can sleep, I can eat a burger, I can do whatever I want in that time period. But what if instead of one hour, you give me one minute, can I change my speed? Still can, no? Go fast, stop, fast, stop, fast, stop. What if you give me five seconds? Still change speed. What if you give me one second? Still, thoda sa na, slow motion me dekhe to, I can change speed. What if you give me 0 0.1 second? I can't change speed in 0 0.1, 0 0.1 second, but maybe Rajnikanth can, I'm not Rajnikanth. So you give me 0 0.1 second, maybe a magician can change speed. You give me 0 0.01 seconds, it's so fast, I can't change my speed. Bingo. So if my time interval is very, very small, the chance of me changing speed is very less. This is the idea with which, you know, uh, differentiation uh, starts. So if, if my time interval is very small, I can then, uh, the chance of me changing speed is very low. So I can take two people in that very small time interval. Let me see how much is this person traveling. Let me see how much is this person traveling. And then I get to understand who's faster. But then I need a reference. It's like, if you give me the price of one masala dosa, I can tell you the price of eight masala dosa or the price of 12 masala dosa or the price of 100 masala dosa. I need a reference. So that way we say, okay, reference is how much distance have you covered in one hour? How much distance have you covered in one minute? Or how much distance have you covered in one second? Which is why in uh, fifth class, we learned this definition of speed, right? Distance covered in unit time. I mean, all of us forgot the definition and only took distance by time. If I ask, what is the definition of speed? Most people tell me distance by time. I say, that is a formula. Can you tell me the definition? Definition is distance covered in unit time. But again, it is very important for us to question why did we take the definition and the explanation which I just gave you, the masala dosa wala thing. Okay, I need a reference and I need to know, uh, you know, uh, some sort of referencing, you know, who's faster, who's not faster. So I say, okay, I'll give you one hour and let me see how much you can run. But point is, in reality, it is uh, not very practical to expect that somebody maintains the same speed over a time interval. So we invented this thing called uh, differentiation where we say the time interval is almost zero. Now, you know, differentiation is in a way cheating. I said differentiation is in a way cheating. It is cheating because on one hand, on one hand, I'll tell you that time is zero. Time is zero. So, it's not come time hai ki bhai tum speed change nahi kar paoge. On the other hand, I'll say it is not zero because if it is zero, then I can't divide. I mean, if it is zero, there's no time interval. It's just a photo. It's not a video. If time interval is zero, it's a photo, not a video. So, there's no movement. The chalk piece is just there. There's no movement. How, how I mean, there's no movement, what speed are you talking of? So on one hand I'm saying it is not zero because I need an interval. On the other hand I'm saying it is zero because if it is zero it is accurate. Nice way of cheating, no? Huh? I mean, if you are more interested in this cheating, you can learn limits and stuff and you go into a little bit of mathematics, you can see how this cheating is done so beautifully. I mean, mathematics allows you to do that, right? I mean, it allows you to do a lot of things which are otherwise considered uh, impossible. So now, uh, so what did I say that if, if I have my distance, and I write dx by dt. Okay. The moment I write symbols like this, people start getting scared. Probably this is scarier than corona. I don't know. So, guys, simple stuff. I talk to you in Latin. I might scare the hell out of you. Right? But that same Latin, if I can translate it to you in English, you get it. You feel confident. Same thing. One of my students, uh, he came up with this interesting idea. He said we need math sub English subtitles for maths language. English subtitles for maths language. So when you have a symbol like this, don't get scared of the symbol. Just breathe in, breathe out. Try to understand what does it mean. See the problem, let it be corona or let it be calculus, the problem is only one thing. The problem is see, our brain has two kinds. One is the instinctive response and the other is the rational response. So, we have instinctive response in our brain, the immediate response without too much of thinking because we should respond to emergencies. Like say there's a fire or there's a danger or something, you should respond immediately so the instinct is there. But it's very important for us to handle our mind and make sure that we tame our instincts because instincts can take us the wrong way. So likewise, here our instinct is telling us that it is scary. But it's actually not scary, we just have to translate it in an easy way so that we understand what it means. Right? So let's tell ourselves that we are taming our instincts. So we are not just learning mathematics, we are learning how to handle our brain. Maths is like a mind gym for our brain. 
So when I say dx by dt, what does dx by dt mean? I am giving you little time, little time because if I give you more time, you will sleep like a tortoise or you will dance, you will do all those things, you will change your speed. So I will give you little time so that you can't change your speed. Like start stop, start stop. So if I give you a lot of time, you can change speed more. So I will give you very little time so you can't change your speed. And in that little time, how much distance you have covered, I divide it by the time interval. Let's say I gave you 0.01 seconds and in 0.01 seconds you covered 0.1 meters. So your speed is 10 meter per second, 0.1 by 0.01, you put it into a calculator, you get 10. It's okay if you can't do calculations, maths is not just about calculations, it's perfectly alright if you can't do calculations quickly. So now why am I doing division? It's something like this, right? If I covered 10 meters in 2 seconds, I'm interested in the distance not in 2 seconds but in 1 second because 1 second was my reference. You remember we said that we need a reference? So, say 60 km per hour in 1 hour how much distance in 1 second how much distance so by dividing it I am getting the distance for 1 second that is for 2 idli 10 rupees for 1 idli how much right that is why I am dividing right so now you might ask me what is the proof for decimals trust me it can be done so if you are interested you can send me a mail and I am happy to explain uh, the proof for if in 0 0.01 seconds I covered 0 0.1 meters for one second how much is it why division is giving me the answer i can give you a proof for that also but it's beyond the scope of this video but if you're interested i'm happy to connect and give you the proof but yeah so our uh, differentiation was dx by uh, dt how is it different from our s by t that is distance by time because it is cheating wala s by t it is same as distance by time it is cheating distance by time what do you mean by cheating distance by time the time interval is almost zero now when i look at this uh now uh, we will we'll actually draw a small graph, okay, we'll, whatever hair and tortoise and cheating and all these ideas we learnt, I mean you might be like, what, why is this fellow doing time pass, why is he talking about cheating and all that, we will we'll bring it in uh, to understand uh, graphs, this end of the day, uh, you know, we, uh, I said the objective is to understand this corona uh, graphics and all of that, so let's look at a graph, let's say I have distance here and I have time here, now what is a graph, I have got some numbers here, one, it's like one stick, 2 stick, 3 stick, 4 stick, 5 stick. Now why am I saying stick? Because if you if you are uh, imagining an abstract number, it can again be scary. I said right, the problem is not with maths, the problem is the instincts that we get scared of the symbol. But if you are able to really imagine it with something which we are more familiar with, probably maths will not be that scary. So I can say 1 stick, 2 stick, 3 stick. If I put 3 stick, what does it mean? 3 seconds are already over. For every 1 second, I will put 1 stick there, over here. Now. Likewise, I have one stick for one meter, one stick for one meter, one, uh, I say one jump, two jump, three jump, four jump. So here I have jumps. One jump, two jump, three jump, four jump, five jump, six jump, seven jump. Or you can say this is one blink, two blinks, three blinks, four blinks, five blinks. Trust me, even if you have left mathematics like 20 years back, you will understand what I am doing here. Okay? We will look at very simple examples, so don't be worried, we will understand this. So, on the x-axis, I've got the blinks. How many times did I blink? One blink, one second. Two blinks, two seconds. Three blinks, three seconds. So that's why I put it there. Now, if I put a dot over here, now this dot, what is happening is, there's a cameraman here and there's a cameraman here. This cameraman is allowed to run only on this line. So I'm a cameraman, I'm allowed to run only on this line and this cameraman has to find the star. So I put a star here. So this cameraman has to cover three blinks to find the star. You get it? If, you, if the cameraman is here, you see this point here, the cameraman is here, the star is here. The star is here, the cameraman is here. Star is here, cameraman is here. So from here the cameraman can't cover the star. So the cameraman has to make one blink, still can't spot the star. Two blink, still can't spot the star. Three blink, now the cameraman can spot the star. Likewise, if there's another cameraman, so this cameraman is only looking at the blinks of the time. There's another cameraman who's looking at the distance. So one jump, I still can't spot the star. Two jumps, I can't spot, uh, yeah, I can spot the star. So to spot the star, it is two jumps and three blinks. So if I if I write the we call it coordinate three comma two. Now coordinate jargon in simple words, its coordinate is nothing but the readings of both the cameramen. One cameraman is telling you okay, how many times did I blink before I got the star. The second cameraman is telling how many times did I jump before I got the star. Those are coordinates. So what I do is for every time like one blink, where was the tortoise, like right now let's say I am drawing a graph of the tortoise, what is my graph of the tortoise? For every time period, I will tell you where the tortoise has gone. 
So at one second, let's say the tortoise was one meter away. That is one blink, one jump. By the time I blinked once, the tortoise had already made one jump. So this way, for every time I am so if I draw a graph like this, what does it mean? For every time, I have plotted the distance. What do you mean by plotted the distance? If the time is 3.5, what do you mean by time is 3.5? 3.5 blinks, 3 full blinks and 1 half blink. Then let's say the distance is 4.25. What do you mean by 4.25? 4 full jumps and a quarter jump. Okay. So I have drawn a graph. Now, I would want to analyze uh, this graph. Because when I analyze this graph, I get a lot of information about how quickly the tortoise is moving. Now, let us take two points on this graph. So when I take two points on this graph, so there is one cameraman here, the time cameraman, okay, and there's another cameraman who's the distance cameraman. So let's call this time cameraman as Rajnikanth and let's call the distance cameraman as Kamalasan. So Rajnikanth is more interested in his watch and Kamalasan is more interested in his walking shoes. So Rajnikanth has uh, uh, blinked a few times to come here and has blinked. Oh, it's not visible. So, there are two points in the curve and these two points are being covered by Rajnikanth and Kamalasan. Uh, Rajnikanth is covering the time and Kamalasan is covering the distance. So, Rajnikanth is interested in the watch and Kamalasan is interested in the shoes. So, Rajnikanth has made some blinks to come here and some more blinks to come here. So, if I take this distance between this point and this point, I mean the distance which... So, Rajnikanth already covered the star. From this star, the Rajnikanth has to go to other star. So, what is the extra distance which Rajnikanth had to cover? to uh, find the second star from the first star that is the uh, horizontal distance now Kamalasan has made some jumps to spot the star and makes some more jumps to spot the second star made some jumps to spot one star some more jumps to spot the second star so what is the extra jump which uh, you know Kamalasan has made to spot the star that is my vertical distance now if Rajnikant made less movement and Kamalasan did more movement. What does it mean? Rajnikan made less movement means less time. Kamalasan more movement, more distance. Less time, more distance. So what does it mean? Speed. But if Rajnikan uh, you know, travelled more and Kamalasan travelled less, what does it mean? More time, less distance. So speed is less. So if the vertical thing this jump is of Kamalasan, this jump is of Rajnikant. So if the height is more and the width is less, it means less time and more uh, distance. So it's like steep, right? It's like this chalk piece is very steep. So this is the time, time is less and this is the distance because the horizontal we said was time, we were plotting time, right? Over here what are we doing? We were counting the number of blinks and over here what are we doing? We are counting the number of jumps. So if this chalk piece is put like this, what does it mean? This is less time and this is more distance. So if it's more steep, that is, this is the, this is initial time and initial distance. This is final time and final distance. What am I, okay, let me not confuse you guys. Let me put it in a simple way. So initially in the graph, this is origin, 0, 0. What does it mean? Rajnikan didn't blink, Kamalasan also didn't jump. But from there they came here. What does it mean? Rajnikan travelled this much to spot this here. Let's say my eye. My eye is the point and this is the origin. So Rajnikanth travelled this much till here. Because if Rajnikanth is covering here, here Rajnikanth is spotting my eye. So this is the time which is travelled by Rajnikanth. And if Kamalasan has to cover till here to spot my eye. So this becomes my coordinate. My X travel and my Y travel. Now from my eye it is going let's say till here. Till this, uh, yeah, till here, till this deep thought. So this is some extra travel of X. This is the travel of Y. Now from my eye, if it has to come to this deep thought, this is the travel of X and this is the travel of Y. Now if the travel of Y is more, the travel of Y is more and travel of X is less, it's very steep. The travel of X is less and the travel of Y is more. So it's very steep. If it is very steep, speed is very high. But if the travel of X is more and the travel of Y is less, X is more and Y is less. What does it mean? The speed is very low. So by seeing whether my... Uh, this line is steep or not steep, I can tell you whether the speed is high or not. Why? Because this was my initial point and this is my final point. And when I join them, if this line, you know, these are two points. I join these two points. If this, these two points are joining the chalk piece, if it is very steep, it means very fast. If it is less steep, it means it is slow. 
right? But again, as I said, we'll do cheating and the time interval has to be less. So what does it mean? The two points become one point. So that is, in mathematics, we call it a tangent. Tangent means it is just touching and going away. Just touching and going away because it does not want to enter, right? This is Hyderabad city. I'm a big truck. I'm not allowed to enter the city. The police will thrash me. So I just come to the edge of the city, give the load and go away. So I'm a tangent. I just come here, touch and go away. That's a tangent. So at any point, if I want the speed, I take the tangent there. If the tangent is very steep, it means it is very fast. If the tangent is less steep, it means it is very slow. Now, why did we come to tangent? Ideally, we had to take one point and other point, And we had to say how much Rajnikanth ran and how much Kamalasan ran. And if Kamalasan's running is more and Rajnikanth's running is less, it means it is more steep and it means it is more fast. But then we said the time interval should be almost zero because then the accuracy will be more. So we said it is not two points, but the two points become one point. So at any point, let's say 11 o'clock, I want the speed, I draw the graph. At 11 o'clock, I draw a tangent. If the tangent is very steep, it means it is fast. If the tangent is very, you know, uh, less steep, then it means it is slow. Now, while you know, when, when you're driving a vehicle, what do you look at? You look at your distance, your odometer will tell you the a distance, you know, how many kilometers you cover, 10 kilometers, 20 kilometers, 30 kilometers, 1 lakh kilometers and all of that. And you also look at your speedometer. So you look at your distance, you look at your speed. But what else do you look at? Now, let us say you and me are uh, participating in a race. You are going at 20 kilometers, uh, you are going at say 80 kilometers per hour, I am going at 20 kilometers per hour. You are already say 200 meters away from me. So does that mean you are winning the race? What if you are driving an Activa and I am driving a Harley Davidson? Right? So even though your speed is more and even though you are way ahead of me, you are 500 meters ahead of me, why am I confident that I can still catch up? Pick up, right? Pick up, right? What is pick up? It is not the speed, but it is about how quickly my speed can change. An Activa might take more time to increase the speed, while a Harley Davidson can increase the speed in lot lesser time. Which is why people, uh, you know, there are a lot of accidents when they drive a Ferrari or something, right? Because the pickup is too high, the speed changes so fast that unless you're experienced, you can't handle that sudden uh, speed. So I'm not just interested in distance. I'm interested in distance. I'm interested in speed. I'm also interested in pickup. So if I do dx by dt, if I do dx by dt, what I'm getting uh, is basically speed. But I can actually do something else to get my, uh, what do I say, pickup. Now, let, let's go to the mathematics of it a little later, but let's, uh, you know, see this uh, graph. I'll show you two different graphs. Look at this fellow, okay? And look at this fellow. Now, let's draw tangents and see what is happening to tangents. There's a tangent here. It's like this. You draw a tangent here, what is happening? So, as you go forward, tangent here, tangent here, tangent here, tangent here. As you go forward, the tangent is becoming steep. You fall down. You stand on it, you fall down. Here you can try, you can stand. But here you will fall down. So the tangent is becoming more and more steep as you go forward. So what do you mean by tangent? So what does it mean? As time is increasing, the tangent is becoming steeper. Means as time is increasing, speed is increasing. Means this is high pickup. Good pickup. Okay, positive pickup. But over here what is happening? Here the tangent is like this, here the tangent is like this. It is becoming more steep, but point is, uh, this is actually in a negative way. That is, if you see, uh, your Kamalasan is not going away from origin. Kamalasan is coming back, coming back to starting point. So it is very steep, but steep in a negative way, in a destroying way, right? Exactly what we should not do during Corona time, you know, stay positive, you know, don't be like this uh, graph. So. It is becoming more and more steep as it comes down, but it is becoming more steep in a negative way. So the speed is because uh, the speed is becoming more as a number, more steep, but negative. Minus 100 is better or minus 10 is better? 100 galis are better or 10 galis are better? 10 galis, no, less gali is better, right? So this is probably better than this. So it is getting worse with time. This is getting better with time. And if I show you this. So, initially the tangent was like this, then the tangent is like this, then the tangent is like this. So, in this curve, which is the left wala u, in the left wala u, 
it is becoming less steep. But less steep in the negative sense because if you see this graph, Kamalasan is coming down, right? The distance is coming down with time, which because you see, as I'm going forward with time, distance is coming down. So here, my negativity is becoming less. That is, my galis are becoming less, which means I'm doing well. So let it be the left cup or the right cup, which is the upper cup. The pickup is more. Why? The speed is increasing. Why? Here, the speed is opposite speed. I mean, I want to go towards Delhi, but I'm going towards Kanyakumari from Hyderabad. So if my speed is decreasing, I, uh, I'm better off because I'm going less far away from Hyderabad because I should take a U-turn and go to Delhi again. So uh, more negative speed means bad. Less negative speed, okay, because I anyway have to take a U-turn and go towards uh, Delhi. So if you see here, the negativity of my speed is decreasing. So it's coming close to zero. So left cup, is good pickup because my speed is coming towards zero. My right cup is again good pickup because my speed is increasing. Now if I take the bottom cup, ulta cup, here what is happening? My uh, steepness is increasing but it is increasing in a negative sense that my speed is less. Here my steepness is again decreasing. Here my steepness was high but my distance is increasing. So now if I analyze all these curves which are given to me, so I mean, ignore all of what I said till now. Let's just take the summary. The summary is we need to look at pickup and we need to look at speed. So if I take both the upper cups, these both upper cups, here what is happening is my steepness is increasing as I go. So that's good pickup. Steepness is, what is steepness? Speed. More steep, more speed. So it is becoming, the speed is increasing with time. So this is good pickup. Here my steepness is decreasing, but this is bad steepness. You know, Zyada Gali, and this is less gali. From many uh, scoldings, I am coming to zero scolding. So here also my speed is increasing. Here also my speed is increasing. So here my speed was like minus infinity. It has come to zero. From zero, my speed is again going to infinity. So this both the pickup is good. Now here, what is happening is, my steepness is becoming, uh, here I am very steep. Here I am going towards uh, flat. but so you see my steep, my speed is decreasing. I was in, I, I was, I was fast here. I was fast here, very steep and in a positive way because as time is increasing, that is as uh, Rajnikant is moving, Kamalasan is moving upwards. So here I was quite fast. Over here I became slow. So this is bad pickup. You know, uh, the the speed is actually decreasing. What pickup? It is slowing me down. Instead, I should not have that engine. That engine is actually slowing me down. If I throw that engine, I'll probably at least maintain the speed. Uh, which I uh, have. So over here what is happening? I had zero speed. Now I'm going, instead of going towards Delhi, I'm going ne negative speed. Means instead of going towards Delhi, I'm going towards Kanyakumari. So that's from zero speed, I'm going towards Gali speed, that is Ganda speed or negative speed. So this is also uh, negative pickup. So in a curve which I have like this, the pickup is negative. Curve which I have upper cup, my pickup is positive. But over here if you see, in all these places, as time is increasing, as uh, you know, Kamalasan is, uh, Rajnikant is moving, Kamalasan is also moving. So in this curve, what is happening is the speed is positive. That is as time is increasing, distance is increasing. But over here, what is happening as time is increasing, that is as, uh, you know, your Rajnikant is moving towards the right, which is the direction he has to move. Kamalasan is coming down. So as time is increasing, distance is falling. That is, he is going on blinking, but this fellow is coming, jumping in the back direction, coming back to the starting point. So this is negative speed this is positive speed but both of them have positive pickup upper cup is positive pickup lower cup is negative pickup because i've given you the proof now over here what is happening as time is increasing distance is falling so this is negative speed but here as time is increasing the distance is also increasing so this is positive speed now if you look at corona curves this curve we are talking of flattening the curve this curve is way better than this curve. Why? Because in this curve what is happening is agreed it is growing with time but the pickup is less. The speed of the vehicle is very high but the pickup is negative. So when the pickup is negative what is happening? It is not engine working, it is brake which is working. When I say upper cup, in the upper cup it is the accelerator which is working. In the bottom cup it is the brake which is working. So because the brake is working the speed is coming down. In the upper one, it is the accelerator which is working, the speed is going up. 
So when I when I flatten the curve, what is happening is I'm putting a break. So although my number of cases every day is increasing, see what is number of cases? Number of cases is like your distance. What is the rate of increase of uh, cases? That is like your speed. So every day 10% increase, 20% increase. That is the speed at which your cases are increasing per day. So even though your speed is increasing, even though your speed is positive, that is cases are increasing, the break is already there. So the speed will come down. So that is like, see, you have to look at number of cases. Number of cases is like distance. You are worried that the cases are increasing. Means this is a positive speed. The bike is traveling. You are worried that the bike is traveling. But what you can be optimistic about is the brake is already applied. If the brake is applied, at some point of time, the bike will stop. Even though the bike is moving, the cases are increasing, the bike is moving, but the brake is applied. So it's not about looking at the speed, but it's about looking at the brake or the pickup here. Now, your speed could be low. Maybe you're having less cases. Your speed could be low. But if your pickup is high, that if Corona is on a Harley Davidson mode, that's problematic. Because you could be at a low speed right now. You could be at a, you know, you're, you're probably not giving too much of work to Kamarasan right now. But suddenly, Harley Davidson will increase the speed and go very high. And then Kamarasan will be, I mean, Rajnikanth will be going slow. But Kamarasan will have to jump, 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 jump. You'll have to give him a nitro boost. He'll, he'll go very fast. So the point is, when you, when you say flatten the curve, what you're talking of is to apply the brakes. Because this curve is better than that curve. So this is how we're uh, interpreting different curves. And... Uh, so, to cut the long story short, if you are looking at a summary, a non-math kind of a summary, you have to look at three different variables here. One is the distance, the other is the speed and the third is the pickup. So, in the case of Corona, the distance would be the number of cases. The speed would be how many cases are getting added each day, you know, 20% extra, 10% extra, 30% extra and so on. And the pickup uh, would be whether the whether the speed or the rate of increase of cases is going up or the increase of cases is coming down. Like maybe initially 20% cases were added every day, but now only 5% cases are adding every day. So slowly that 5% will also come down to negative percent and uh, gradually it will come down to a halt, right? So if you have to really stop Corona, it is not about stopping the speed. It is not about how many new cases get added, but you have to be even better. It's not just about radio. It's not just about traveling at a low speed, but you have to put the brake. That is the speed should keep decreasing. So that is what is flattening the curve and the speed will keep decreasing if we follow social distancing. So I think uh, now it, it brings me to the conclusion of this video. I didn't go too much into technicalities of calculus, but I think uh, I wanted to convey one simple message that is our instincts usually tell us that it is not doable, but there is there are ways to tame our instincts. Like instead of calling it, see I could have written d, uh, d square x by dt square, you would have got scared. But when I say d square x by dt square, it is nothing but pickup. It means that uh, I am finding the speed not once, but I am finding the speed twice. So, see here 2 dal diya. And d by dt, what does it mean? It means it is a cheating way of finding speed. Because the cheating way of finding speed is more, uh, you know, accurate. So, instead of speaking so many words, cheating way of finding speed, find the speed twice, of the distance, over time. I have to talk so much. But instead, if I write a symbol, it becomes faster. So, initially... Symbols appear very scary, but eventually when we get used to it, that's why one great mathematician said, we don't understand mathematics, we only get used to it. So when we use this softer examples, I repeat softer examples initially and get used to the symbols, that is, you know, math subtitle, English subtitles for maths language, we get comfortable with it. So maths is not scary. I could have scared by writing a lot of notation, but I chose to tell you stories to make a convincing case for you that maths can actually be very easy, provided you're using uh, simpler uh, examples. So, yeah, it's simple as long as you're it's simple as long as you're using meaningful stories to look at it. So our instincts are sometimes cheating us. Our instincts are telling us that it is hard, but it is not hard. So we need to tame our instincts. Don't overthink. And if you're overthinking, what do you do? Write it on a paper and translate it to simple words, or maybe explain it to someone. So you're too worried about Corona. What do you do? Whatever your worries are, write them on a paper, translate it to simpler English. What does it mean? You're using a word that uh, will I be safe? Now what do I mean by will I be safe? Translate it to a lot simpler English and understand for yourself. You will tame your instincts and not get too scared. So you see there are uh, life lessons also from mathematics. Mathematics teaches us problem solving but the same ideas of problem solving can apply it in life also. So I hope you will win your fear. Let's be more composed. I am sure we can have a lot of fun with mathematics. I hope to send more videos. So do tell me what you felt about this video. If you didn't like something also do tell me. That feedback will help me in improving. 
so i do enjoy teaching and i'm sure we can learn a lot of things uh, together while we're staying safe at home thank you for watching